Cameron has warmed of what he calls a toxic tie-up between the SNP and Labour, and he says the SNP's only purpose is to break up the United Kingdom. Well, earlier today, I spoke to the SNP's Alex Salmond, the former First Minister of Scotland, asking him first what he makes of those comments from the Prime Minister. I think uh, as the Prime Minister gets more and more desperate, his language gets ever more extreme. I, I think uh, the poor man is looking overwrought. In fact, it's a good job he didn't do that last debate with Nicola Sturgeon, otherwise he'd look even more in rot or overwrought than he does. And, even more desperate. So uh, I think David Cameron showing every sign of a, a Prime Minister in the final stages of his Premiership. And there's lots of people in Scotland think, thank goodness. But what about the aims of the Scottish National Party? Uh, is everything subordinate to the idea of getting Scottish independence? And that's what you'll do if you get to Westminster, simply try and further that aim. No, Nicola Sturgeon brilliantly laid out the SNP campaign plan, which is inspiring so much support, not just in Scotland, of course, but as we saw from the, the polls after the two debates, she won these debates, according to YouGov, right across the United Kingdom. And our two aims are, obviously, to, to further Scottish interests, to, to secure the interests of the Scottish people. You'd expect the Scottish National Party to do that, but also to aid progressive politics, uh, right across the United Kingdom, so as we can move away from public spending cuts, uh, we cannot waste £100,000 million in putting nuclear weapons on the, on the River Clyde. So to aid progressive politics right across these islands, in conjunction with our allies in the Green Party in England and Plaid Cymru in Wales. And that's the inspiring message, which is taking this election by storm. Because what David Cameron is saying is basically you can't be trusted to work in the best interests uh, of the UK if you have a significant block of MPs at Westminster after May the 7th because you have this other motive. Well, David Cameron can't be trusted, and we know that from the day after the referendum when he swanned out at Downing Street and, and, and started to talk about uh, constitutional change in England that he hadn't even mentioned during the referendum instead of redeeming his commitment and vow and promises that he'd made to the, the, the Scottish people. Uh, but it's, it's pretty uh, clear, isn't it, uh, the hypocrisy involved in the Conservative Party campaign. I mean, during the referendum, they said that Scotland was to play a, a full part in the United Kingdom. Uh, and now that we are trying to play a full part in the United Kingdom, having a significant role uh, in the next United Kingdom Parliament, then he starts complaining and starts describing that as illegitimate, as if he's discounting not just the SNP, but the, the whole demo democratic basis of Scotland. You know, I think the Conservatives are going to find, not just in Scotland, incidentally, but across the United Kingdom, the people who try to treat Scots like second-class citizens in this election are going to get short shrift from the people, and that's exactly where David Cameron is at the present moment. So if, uh, as uh, many polls suggest, the SNP are the third largest force at Westminster after Labour of the Conservatives, uh, presumably uh, you will be in opposition. Uh, will you be like uh, the Liberal Democrats in the old days with uh, two questions at Prime Minister's questions and things like that? Well, let's uh, the Scottish people decide how many seats we get. Obviously, the more seats we get, the more influence Scotland will have in the next parliament and no doubt the procedures of the House of Commons will reflect that. So the, the possibility is are as follows. Either we could have a confidence and supply arrangement with the Labour Party, that's possible, it's not likely but it's possible, or, or more likely the, the Scottish National Party could use uh, its votes on a vote by vote basis to give support to the Labour Party when that support is due and also of course to try and move pro politics in a more progressive direction. You know we're finished on end People are fed up with public spending cuts. We're fed up with that austerity programme. We want to move to a different style of politics, uh, and that's what the SNP voting power would be used for, to, to, to use it to benefit Scotland, certainly, but also to aid progressive politics uh, across these islands. You are a man, though, who's been leader of your party. You've been First Minister uh, of Scotland. If you are fortunate and the voters smile on you, uh, as you put it, and you are elected as an MP. Uh, can you say whether or not you would uh, be the leader of the SNP group at Westminster? You know, I'd be very happy to, to serve under Angus Robertson, who's a long-term friend. In fact, Angus started his political career working for me in the, in the northeast of, uh, 
uh, of Scotland and uh, you know, a fine member of Parliament and parliamentary leader he is. But the SNP, of course, has a, a collective leadership. We will all be playing a role. And if there's a, a substantial uh, role for the Scottish National Party, if people entrust us to, to further Scottish interests and to help progressive politics across the UK. Finally, uh, Gordon Brown, uh, we're told, is going to make his biggest speech of this election uh, campaign uh, so far. Uh, are you worried that that might boost the Labour cause in Scotland? I think when Gordon uh, announced his retirement uh, uh, a few months back, uh, people were quite surprised, you know, because, uh, well, he did actually say he was going to act as custodian of the, the vow, the commitment, the promises that were made to the people of Scotland during the referendum campaign. And it's very difficult to see how, that, how he's going to do that from, uh, from his retirement. So uh, I think when Gordon did that, uh, he, his, probably his, uh, his influence in politics came to an end. So no doubt people will listen to, to Gordon with great respect. Uh, but I think people are looking to those who will actually be serving. And hopefully there will be a lot of SNP MPs serving Scotland. And uh, just uh, again, speaking of Gordon Brown and uh, national and UK finances, the IFS have been looking at everyone's uh, finances and they uh, have concluded that because uh, the SNP is clear how it's going to balance the books uh, that there could actually be more austerity under the SNP in Scotland than there would be uh, under Labour. What would you say to that? Well, that's incorrect. Uh, I mean, three reasons for that. One is the IFS make a, a pretty a critical mistake. They, uh, they say the SNP are looking for a 1.4% uh, uh, budget deficit in 2019. The figure is actually 1.6 percent. They seem to have transposed our deficit with the Labour Party's uh, uh, deficit. Uh, secondly, they also make a mistake in Labour Party finances. They, they seem to be uh, assuming that Labour are going for a freeze in non-departmental public spending. And Ed Miliband, actually quite rightly today, has pointed out that's not the case, that Labour are going for a cut in non-protected departments, leading to uh, a current budget surplus in, in 2019, according to Labour's plans. Uh, and thirdly, of course, this strange thing they've done is while praising the SNP for not allocating a sum for clamping down on tax avoidance, they then give a sum to the other parties despite saying they've, they've made it up. So for these three reasons, the IFS have got their sums a bit muddled. Uh, but the key thing, of course, is in page four of the report, where they, to be fair to the IFS, they absolutely agree that the Scottish National Party are the only party in this election, the only party with a chance of influencing the next House of Commons who want to have real terms increases of half a percent in departmental budgets to move away from the public spending cuts that we've seen over the last five years and start investing in the future of the country. Uh, so that's clear enough, and it's that platform that's giving the SNP such substantial support in this election. Alex Salmon, thank you very much indeed for joining us from Aberdeen. Uh, a great pleasure, Adam. Thank you.